Here's an example of a question, and I want to show you how we would break this down. This has been changed a little bit from the worksheet that your teaching instructor might have handed out uh, in tutorial. Uh, what I've done here is reworded it a little bit so there's a better flow from the one that was handed out. If you're viewing this on the page uh, with the all the videos put together, there's a link to the more updated version and with the wording and numbers. So here we go. Let's take a look at this. Um, if we're dealing with two true breeding lizards, we know they're homozygous at both loci, and I'm throwing in two mutant traits, which I've named bent tail and curled claws. You'll notice if we look in the phenotype table here, I'm not talking about what the wild type looks like, and that's not uncommon for this kind of a question. Uh, where this says wild type, we can assume that it has a tail, but it's not bent, and we can assume there are claws, they just don't happen to be curled. Here we have a bent tailed with normal claws, and we have curled claws with a normal tail at this point. Uh, the information I've underlined here, the F1 lizards being all wild type in appearance, tells us that both mutant traits are recessive. Well, let's work this out and see what else we can find out uh, from this information. If we're going to do a test cross, that means we're going to cross it with a lizard that is recessive, homozygous recessive, for both the traits we're looking at. So uh, one thing we would expect from a test cross is that if the genes are unlinked, there'd be a one-to-one-to-one-to-one -to -one -to -one -to -one ratio. That's basic Mendelian uh, genetics. And when you look over here, you see that that's totally not the case. We have a higher proportion here and a much lower number here. So that means that the genes are not unlinked, they are linked. Okay, so when we break down this um, problem, we should always put in gene symbols. And so I'm going to name the locus after the recessive condition. So bent tail and normal tail are indicated here. Uh, we're also going to deal with curled claw and normal claw. And I'm putting a plus sign by the wild type traits. Notice that there's a lowercase letter here that tells us that the um, mutant allele is recessive to the wild type. So if we draw the parental situation, and we're going to look at this again in the next screen, uh, we've got BNTCUR plus in coupling together and BNTCUR mutants also in coupling. Coupling just means that both the risks, uh, the, the mutants are going together, the mutations are going together. Uh, coupling also means the wild types also go together. So the F1 in this case has uh, one chromosome with the wild type traits, one with the mutant traits, and this is the test cross we have here. And when we look up here, we see that the numbers in the corner do reflect no crossover. So if no crossover occurs between these, we're going to get the most common version. The closer together these two genes are to each other, the less likely we'll have a crossover. And so they're fairly close together considering the large number of progeny we're looking at and the very few number of recombinants that we see. We see a lot more parentals than we do the recombinants. So in the test cross, we're gonna take one locus from the um, parent who's homozygous recessive, and I'm gonna put it up here in purple, but I'll make that go away in a minute. I wanna show my convention here. We'll, just for this example, use the wild type chromosome with both the wild type alleles on it and we're putting it up here and that would give us a wild type phenotype because uh, bent tail wild type allele is completely dominant to the bent tail mutant recessive allele so it has a normal tail because of this it also has normal claws uh, even though it's heterozygous for both of those conditions so we can make that go away and we can see that there's 471 that are heterozygous for both loci. And I'm not going to draw from this point on any of the test cross parents chromosomes. Now we can see bent tail and curled claws is the other outcome. That would have been the other chromosome that we got from the heterozygote uh, parent. And of course the test cross parent is recessive for both characters. So again we see the parental combination showing up. And one recombinant is having a bent tail that we've notified here but we have normal allele for the claw gene, and likewise we can have a normal tail gene and the curled claw allele giving us the curled claws phenotype. So again, this is coupling when we have the dominance and uh, the, the wild type dominance and the 
uh, recessives going together on the same chromosome. And here we can see they are in repulsion, where it looks like this dominant trait is kind of allergic to the other one. It, it, it's, a, it's a recombination of those. This is a convention I'll use as I describe the recombinants. To further carry out this question, to define the map distance, or we're in the next part of this question, uh, we're going to look at the number of recombinants over the total number of progeny and multiply that 100. It's a, it's a simple ratio. So if I ask you to show your work, definitely write down the formula. Uh, if you add up all these progeny, we have a thousand of them. Uh, turns out that we have 11 plus 14 recombinants out of a thousand total. That's 25 out of a thousand, and that gives us a map distance of 2.5 centimorgans or 2.5 map units, which basically means there's a 2.5% chance of recombination occurring in that region. So here is a genetic map that demonstrates what we're looking at. And I will carry this on in the next uh, example, in the next movie that I post, where we can take a look at what happens when we add another locus to this.